Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. My heart is so sad because I love I love Joy so much. We interrupt this program. I want to turn the other ones off. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. My heart is broken. My passion in life is joy and beauty. And these low-life little pieces of crap, your little politicians, politics, suck the joy out of life. Hey, I'm the governor. I'm Andy Cuomo. I'm born on third base. I thought he'd a home run. My daddy was Mario. I'd be a nobody if daddy wasn't there. And I'm going to tell you what to do. Lock down your businesses. Stay in your houses. I'm going to make up any crap I want and shove it down your throat. You're not an American. I'm the governor. I'm the mayor. I'm the president. I'm the chancellor. You're all people that have robbed us of our freedom, our liberty, and our joy of life. And this has to stop. We are on the four corners of freedom. Crown and John Street. You look over that way and you see the old, uh, where they signed the declaration, the, the first constitution to New York State. Over 70% of America's constitution comes from the constitution that was written right over there. You can look at it. The seeds of democracy were sown here. And now we got a bunch of little arrogant clowns robbing us of our freedom and our peace. And it has to stop. We, we have to bring back the true spirit of America. And now, and now, as I say, when all else fails, they take you to war. And they've taken us to World War III. It's begun. If I said to one of you, hey, give me a gun. I want to blow this guy's brains out. Would you be an accessory to the crime? America is an accessory to the crime. They just announced they're sending another almost $300 million of our money to go mm. keep bloodying the killing fields of Ukraine. Almost $60 billion as the roads are all rotted around the country, as the bridges are falling down. This is what they're doing. The White House, why, that's sexist. I don't, why a White House? That's terrible. I mean, let's be really stupid. We'll make up any crap we want. The White House said on Friday, announced another $270 million worth of U.S. You ready for this? Security assistance. Isn't that a nice word for all the little stupid people to swallow? To enrich the military industrial complex. To keep a war that would have ended if they negotiated for peace in the beginning. And again, totally against the invasion. And again, totally understand why it happened. I forgot to bring out my Trends Journal from um, September, uh, spring 2014 when the United States overthrew the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych in Ukraine, on and on and on, all the details. So I know the why, I'm against it, but they should have negotiated for peace, and they didn't. Then they go on to say, the newest batch of supplies will include four HIMRS rocket artillery launches. 
in addition to four more high mobility artillery rockets and an unspecified numbers of GLMR rockets for them. You ready? The aid package. Wait a minute, you're talking about sending weapons of death, you're calling it an aid package? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to the American people. And they'll believe anything we say because they listen to the mainstream news and listen to those little prostitutes, those media whores that get paid to put out by their government whoremasters and their corporate pimps. So we'll say anything that we want. President Joe Biden, quote, has been clear that we're going to continue to support the government of Ukraine and its people for as long as it takes. As long as it takes for what? For the war to keep going on, to kill more people? Wouldn't it be wonderful if your house was blown apart and you had to leave? Rather than peace? World War III has begun. They're only going to make it official when a nuclear exchange or a false flag happens. Just like, okay, little boys and girls, World War I began when the Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo. Yeah, what's in Sarajevo? Who gives a damn about the Archduke? Oh, no, World War II began when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah, nothing else was going on before that. I'm telling you, if we don't unite for peace, we are going to die in war. And by the way, please donate a lot of you have to Occupy Peace. And the lovely lady, Kelly, is coming around with a donation to please give to us because we're doing all we can to make this happen. And we need to make this movement go global. It has to be a global movement and it has to be much, much continuing and much bigger, and I thank you all for coming. I'm, I'm hot warm on this very hot day. So, mankind must put an end to war, or war will put an end to mankind. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy, the guy that got his brains blown out because he didn't want to go into the Vietnam War. I have a photograph of me and John Connolly. John Connolly was the governor of Texas. He was the guy that sat in front of Kennedy that took the bullet in the back. I have a photo of me, him, and his wife, Nellie, in front of the book depository. He wanted to meet me his first time back, their first time back since Kennedy was assassinated. As we're walking back into the Anatole Hotel, he had read my book, Tread Track which Time Magazine, Time's Father, The Mega Trends, it's a great book. And he said, you know, I read your book. He said, your heart's in the right place. He said, well, you don't have a clue what's going on. And neither do the American people. Because if they did, there'd be a revolution in this country. This is John Connolly. John Connolly, the Democratic governor of Texas, who took the bull in the back and then became the Treasury Secretary under Richard Nixon that took us off the gold standard. If the American people knew what was going on, there'd be a revolution in this country. That was 1992. And look how much ter more terrible it's gotten since then. Because the media controls it. But most Americans are waking up. The latest Gallup survey that just came out Americans' confidence in two facets of the news media, newspapers and television news, has fallen to an all-time low. Just 16% of U.S. adults now say they have a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in newspapers and 11% in television news. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. And please do, because the more of you we have, the more we can do. And I'm going to stay on that because, quote, we all know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. William J. Casey, CIA director under Ronald Reagan, 
1981. And that's where we're at today. Once upon a time, there was a man by the name of George Washington. And he goes on to say, avoid avenues to foreign influence in innumerable ways, such as attachments are particularly alarming to the truly enlightened and independent patriots. No foreign entanglements, he said. It's not our business. Europe, this is his farewell address. Europe has, set, has a set of primary interests, which to us have none, or a very remote relation. Hence, she must be engaged in frequent controversies. In other words, they're going at it all the time. The cause of which are essentially foreign to our concerns. They're none of our business. George Washington, a real man, cat crossed the Delaware, right? Yeah, fought the wars. Oh, not like the guy we got playing out with defense contractor. Uh, uh, defense contractor. Oh, uh, Department of Defense, excuse me. Lloyd Austin. Oh, he's a former general. Oh, yeah? And what happened after he became a general? Oh, you mean he's sitting on the board of directors of Raytheon, the second largest defense contractor in the United States? George Washington, a real hero of a man, a real fighter, not like these little guys playing president that couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag if they had to, but they're happy to send us, hey, Lindsey Graham. People that cared about it and knew about it, another real man who fought or saw deadly, the deadliest war, World War II, Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star president, Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in World War II. His farewell address on January 17th, 1961. Quote, Our military organization today bears little resemblance to that known by any of my predecessors in peacetime, or indeed by the fighting men of World War II or Korea. Until the latest of our world conflicts, the United States had no armaments industry. Imagine that. American makers of plowshares could with time and as required make swords as well, but now we can no longer risk emergency improvisation of national defense. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportion. Added to this, three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. We annually spend on military security more than the net income of all United States corporations. This conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved so is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic process. We should take nothing for granted. Only the alert 
and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machine of the defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. Disarmament with mutual honor and confidence is a continuing imperative. Together we must learn how to compose differences, not with arms, but with intellect and decent purpose. Because this need is so sharp and apparent, I confess that I laid down my official responsibilities in this field with a definite sense of disappointment. As one who has witnessed the horror and the lingering sadness of war, as one who knows that another war could ultimately destroy this civilization, which has been so slowly and painfully built over thousands of years, I wish I could say tonight that a lasting peace is in sight. You and I, my fellow citizens, need to be strong in our faith that all nations under God will reach the goal of peace with justice. Imagine these words, imagine these words from Washington and Eisenhower, and I got these little arrogant freaks spewing out their crap of how we're going to fight to the end. Again, they knock down the, the, the they want to knock down the statue of Catherine the Great in Ukraine because of the terrible things that she did to the Ukrainian people. Catherine the Great, when was that? Oh, around 1750? You mean this stuff has been going on since 1750? Between Ukraine and Russia? And you want me to get involved in it as an American? That's not my business. And how about the media? Every day, every day, every day, the horrors of the Ukraine war. Hey, where were you with the Iraq war? How come you weren't showing America's destruction of Fallujah? Leveled it to the ground by Mad Dog Mattis. Oh yeah, the guy that became the defense secretary? Yeah, that guy. How come you weren't showing the destruction of Afghanistan for 20 years? How about Libya? What about Yemen, the worst humanitarian crisis on earth? Brought to you by the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, folks. Who's folking us? He's always so proper, folks. Yeah, you like the Libyan War? I want that guy, Gaddafi, out of there. No, Salenti, be proper. Gaddafi must go. We have to bring freedom and liberty to Libya, who has the most profitable oil fields in the world. You think we'd be in Iraq if their major export was broccoli? You think we'd be in eastern Syria pumping out the oil? If they didn't have oil? We have a crime syndicate, as someone told me, that I continue to repeat. This isn't a government. Eisenhower made it clear. Our rights and our freedom have been robbed from us. Locking us down, telling us what to do. No, no, science, only political science. That's all that counts. We are in the time of our lives. Yesterday, and again, you can't make this crap up, the guy playing the president of Ukraine, who played the president of Ukraine as, when he was a comedian on a sitcom, that then became the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, refuses peace talks. The Ukrainian president claims they will not stop until Russia gets smashed. <laughs> if we don't stop this war, again, World War III has begun. And the arrogance of them sending more of our money to go fight and die, to me, makes absolutely no sense at all. You know, I want to thank everybody. The, the hot damn band. These these people are great, man. This is the sound of the sound. This was the sound of the soul of America. Look what it's gone to. It's gone from what? Uh, 
you know, what was before, so ragtime to swing to uh, R&B to rock and roll to Motown and now to no town, one bad rap, man. And that's how the whole society's going down. Look at the talent, the care of the people that are here, the speakers, the band, everyone doing everything that we can, all you people being here, the spirit of America that has been robbed and stolen from us. We are going into the worst, the worst economic decline in modern history. The headline of Drudge Report was Warning, Recession Ahead, Job Market Shows Cracks. No kidding. Wow, I'm blown away. We never have known that. Only been writing about it for months. Oh, remember the inflation was temporary and then transitory, and now in the woke world, transgendatory inflation? <laughs> this is serious. As I said, when all else fails, they take you to war. And war has begun. United we stand, divided we die. I bought these buildings, I own the three buildings here. I'll make this very quick. I was looking to leave the country in 2010. And I've been traveling around, there's nowhere I wanted to go. And we were opening up the Trends Journal in Germany. And I left here on April 17th, 2012. I came back on April 17th, 2012. I was in Berlin, I'd never been there before. Berlin was grander than Paris before it was bombed out. And I spent a lot of time in Paris. And I'm saying to myself, everywhere I look, I see a beautiful German building and all new construction. Beautiful German building and all new construction. Germany in the 1930s, the height of Western civilization, culturally, scientifically, philosophically. Where were the people to stop it? You're losing destroy Dresden one after another. Where were the people? Where were the people saying stop, stop? I came back on April 27th and right out in that fence over there, there was a for sale sign that went up when I went away. I called the agent up. She came to my office on April 30th. I took possession of this building on June 1st and I bought the other three. One was in foreclosure, the other one was empty for five years. I bought them because the seeds of democracy were so near. And I realized I can't run away. I'm only me because I'm a lucky man, I'm a Napolitan, I'm born in the Bronx. Born to be free. Born to be who I want to be. Having parents, my, they may they rest in peace, my father. I shoot my mouth off, he said to me, Papagallo, you little parrot. Stop repeating what everybody else is saying. Think for yourself. How dare you think for yourself? I'm your governor. I'm your mayor. I'm little gruesome Gavin Newsom. A little piece of nothing. But I'm the governor of California. I suck into the system, bow down and take it wherever I have to, like all the other politicians. And I know because I was there. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. I ran major political campaigns in Westchester County. I designed and instructed American politics and campaign technology and I taught it at St. John's University. I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement in the 1970s, working for the chemical industry. I've been on the other side. Let me tell you who the people in politics are. The people I couldn't stand 
in high school and college that wanted to be class president or head of the student council. And all of these bureaucrats, these are people that can't get a job in the real world that suck into the system and bow down and take it. Nobody could believe when I quit. I said, man, this isn't my kind of trip. We'd be in the back of the chamber talking. My buddies would leave me, follow the senator, pull out his chair and help him sit down. Oh, you could blow on these chairs and make them move. I said, what's the matter, man? Cat can't sit down by himself, he needs some help? You know, Gerald, you have that kind of an attitude. You're not going to make it here. <laughs> yeah, I quit. Nobody could believe it. Yeah. My mother made she rest in peace when I was a little kid. And an incident would happen. I didn't know what happened. She'd say to me, I hate cowards. I hate cowards. And I wouldn't, you know, do anything to disrespect my mother. Although I've done a lot of stuff in a lot of ways. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> on the coward level, I grew up to be a man. Nobody tells me what to do. And I don't tell anybody what to do. And as Americans, nobody tells us what to do. You heard Judge Napolitano. You heard Scott Ritter. You heard Phil Giraldi. We're Americans. We're free to be us. That's what this country was founded upon. And they're robbing it from us, right in front of our eyes. So thank you for all being here. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We are going to unite for peace, and we're going to bring back prosperity for all. Thank you very much for coming. I really, really appreciate it. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you. And stick around for the hot damn band because... I don't know whether it was Muhammad, Jesus, or Buddha, but one of them said, you better boogie before the lights go out because tomorrow is iffy. <laughs> so we're going to hear some hot boogie. Thank you.